Welcome to Inside Reports. I'm Jeff Maynard. Our top breaking story, the secret world inside our homes. For many of us, out of sight means out of mind. But in her exclusive Inside Report, our Lisa Barron tells us that we're all sharing our homes with uninvited guests. And Lisa's going to introduce you to them with live exclusive footage. Lisa? There is a secret living and microscopic world found in every American home. You can't see it with the naked eye, but this world is inhabited by teeming millions. Where? In your carpeting, in your bedding, and in the ever-present dust found in even the cleanest of homes. Could your home be any cleaner than this one? Sharon and Bill consider cleaning a team effort, but their team may be up against too much. You see, common household dust is comprised of millions of minuscule particles. And try not to hold your breath, bugs. Your carpet and bedding can be loaded down with dust mites, pollen, bacteria, mold spores, and in many houses, pet dander. The one thing they all have in common, you can't see them with the naked eye. The media is starting to focus on this world of strangers, and it's starting to make many families concerned. We both have jobs, so we share the cleaning responsibilities, and we value a clean home, so we work very hard at it. Personally, it's hard to believe the place is still this dirty after all the work we've gone through. These unwanted house guests are too small to see, but micro-cinematographer David Scharf has captured these creatures and organisms on film at very high magnifications with his scanning electron microscope. It would be hard to not find a dust mite. Uh, dust mites are in upholstery under sofas and uh, in the rugs that are near that. The dust mite, when it dies, will break up into, into, uh, into pieces. You know, you'll find a leg here and maybe part of the, uh, the abdomen, uh, the thorax, and uh, there may be other insects such as carpet beetles which will feed off of the remnants of, uh, of, of the uh, dust mites. The problem with most vacuum cleaners is that they're, even though they may have high airflow and pick up the small particles, the filtration efficiency is not good enough that, so that what happens is they get blown right through the filter and back out into the air again which can actually cause more problems because then they become airborne again and you breathe them in. Related to the spider and the tick, dust mites are eight-legged, hairy creatures with pinking sheer jaws. They freely and invisibly roam our carpets and mattresses. Many allergists now believe that dust mites, and specifically their feces, trigger more allergic reactions than anything else in our homes. The good news is that many vacuum cleaners can capture and trap dust mites. The bad news is that their allergen-containing feces along with other organisms, such as bacteria and lung-damaging dust, are much smaller, too small for many vacuum cleaners to filter. These particles can actually end up getting blown into the air we breathe. And this world is not limited to dust mites. Remember, this world of uninvited guests outnumbers you by the millions in your own home. You can't see them, and you should probably consider yourself lucky. Consumer reporter Jim Gaines explains why these organisms are so far winning the battle against our efforts to wipe them out of our home environments. Lisa, the real dilemma in effective vacuuming comes down to the two things a vacuum cleaner has to do to be effective, to provide cleanability, so to speak. The first is airflow. We all want our vacuum cleaners to have a lot of air movement so they can pull the contaminants out of our carpets, our furniture, our drapes and bedding. Now, in the case of these microscopic particles, they get caught in the fibers of our carpets and fabrics, so it takes a lot of air movement to get them out. This is an expensive vacuum cleaner. It may sound powerful, but here's the catch-22. The guts of any vacuum cleaner is the filter. With standard mechanical filters, the better the filter, the less air that can pass through. They filter by obstructing air passages, but if the filter is porous enough to let a lot of air through, it's too porous to pick up the smaller particles. Let me show you. Talcum powder contains particles as small as one-third of a micron, about the size of many of the offending organisms we've been talking about. Yet, the majority of vacuum cleaners can't filter effectively particles this small. So, 
they blow into the air we breathe, making the situation worse than when you started. But there is an answer. Let me ask you this question. Now that you've seen this, do you feel it's important to do something about this? Oh, well, There's more of them than there are of us. What are we going to do? Yes, we would like to do something about it. Let me tell you, you can. Jim Gaines tells us that one company has risen above the pack. Lisa, this is the latest in a long line of vacuum cleaner advancements by the Kirby Company. Let me tell you what they've come up with. The trick is called electrostatically enhanced filtration. Let me make this easy to understand. Special layers of this electrostatically charged material attract and capture sub-micro-sized particles. Every kid knows how this works. Static electricity. The point being, the Kirby G4 stops the majority of small particles without compromising its powerful airflow. And here's the acid test. Power and filtration. Goodbye, dust mites, and their aggravating particles, too. It's a good report, Lisa, and very surprising news. Well, this is probably the first time most people have seen who they're actually sharing their homes with. I'm Jeff Maynard. And I'm Lisa Barron, and this has been Inside Reports. Thanks for being with us. Hello, I'm Jim Salk, Senior Vice President of Marketing for the Kirby Company. Welcome to the video version of the G4 Owner's Manual. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce the President and Chief Executive Officer of Kirby, Mr. Gene Winfeld. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you and your family to the Kirby family. The fact you've chosen our home care system indicates that you're the type of person who appreciates quality, reliability, and performance. Your Kirby is clearly the most advanced home care system in the market today. But our commitment to you doesn't stop with innovation. All our efforts are directed towards offering you the most rugged and reliable system in Kirby history. Of course, it goes without saying that the more you know about the Kirby, the more you'll get out of it, and the better investment will become. That's what this video is all about. Take the time to learn about using the various parts of your Kirby system, and I'm sure it will deliver years of dependable service. Once again, from all of us here at Kirby World Headquarters, thanks for allowing us into your home and welcome to the Kirby family. Thanks, Gene. This video was designed to help you take maximum advantage of the powerful features built into every G4. Used in conjunction with your printed owner's manual, it will help you make the most of your new Kirby. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the G4 owner's manual video. The Kirby G4, the most advanced product of its kind on the market today. A product for those who appreciate quality, reliability, and performance. This video owner's manual will help you take advantage of the G4's many features and has been divided into sections for easy reference. Part one is called Getting Started. This section will familiarize you with a few basic G4 features. Part two will show you how to use your Kirby as an upright and as a portable cleaner. Part three will help you set up your G4 as a canister cleaner and show you how to use its wide range of attachments. Part four will discuss the various optional accessories which complement and add value to the G4. Part five will provide you with some handy operating and maintenance tips. And part six is the story of the Kirby opportunity. It represents a chance for someone you know to earn extra income, sharing this fine product with friends and neighbors. To get the most out of this video owner's manual, view the entire tape first. Then, when you need a refresher, you can search through the tape to find the section or item you would like to review. 
Please note, this video is not intended to replace your G4 owner's manual. It can help you get started, but if you need more information, consult the owner's manual included with your G4. This section, Getting Started, covers the general information you'll need to begin using your G4, including moving and carrying your G4, using the handle tilt latch, using the toe touch control, using tech drive power assist, installing or changing disposable Micron Magic filter bags, emptying the Mini M Tour, understanding the belt lifter, and understanding the brush roll indicator light. Your G4 is equipped with tech drive. This variable power assist actually senses the speed and direction of the G4 and provides up to 90% of the power required to move it back and forth. Please note that you must turn tech drive off in order to push your G4 when the motor is not running. To do this, push down on the gray N side of the power assist pedal. The N stands for neutral. Now you should be able to push the G4 freely. Pick up the G4 by the handy carrying grip located at the base of the handle to carry the G4 to another area. Remember, lift with your legs, not your back. Your Kirby G4 also has a convenient handle tilt latch, which serves two purposes. First, it allows you to lift the front of the Kirby over door thresholds or throw rugs. To do so, push the handle tilt latch toward the bag. Then, pull back on the handle until the front of the Kirby lifts up and push it to the next area. The tilt latch will also allow you to store your Kirby in a vertical position. Push the handle tilt latch to the center position. Lower the handle all the way. Push the handle tilt latch to the lock position away from the bag. You can now stand the Kirby up on its bumper for storage. When you're ready to use the Kirby again, you'll want to unlock the handle tilt latch. However, never unlock the handle tilt latch without first grasping the handle. The handle is spring-loaded and could fly up when unlatched. The toe touch control, located over the front wheel, raises and lowers the front of your Kirby. Step down on the bottom toe touch control pedal to raise the front. Note that the G4 should always be in this position before removing or attaching any nozzles. Then, each time you press on the toe touch control upper pedal, you will lower the front of the machine one notch. The number of bars showing above the toe touch control provide an indication of the nozzle height. To engage tech drive, and put the G4 in the power assist mode, push down the green D, or drive side of the tech drive pedal. This innovative feature eliminates most of the effort required to move your Kirby back and forth. Remember, to move your Kirby with the motor off, tech drive must be put into neutral. Push down the gray N, or neutral side of the tech drive power assist pedal. Then, raise the nozzle to its highest position. Please note that tech drive should always be in neutral when cleaning any hard surface flooring. A disposable Micron Magic filter bag is required for proper operation of your G4. Before installing or changing a disposable filter bag, unplug the power cord from the wall outlet and make sure the motor and fan have stopped. Then unzip the outer bag and pull out the top adapter along with the attached disposable filter bag. Always remember to replace the disposable filter bag when full. Failure to do so will affect the performance of your unit. Also, make sure to use only genuine Kirby Micron Magic filtration bags. The use of any other disposable bag will affect the performance of your filtration system. Next, release the bag support strap. Hold the top adapter steady while you turn the disposable filter bag's cardboard plate. When the top of the adapter aligns with the slot in the cardboard plate, gently pull the bag off. 
To install a new filter bag, align the adapter with the slots in the cardboard plate on the disposable filter bag. Then push the adapter into the bag opening and rotate the adapter to secure the filter bag. Connect the bag support strap to the top bag adapter. Finally, insert the bag adapter and new filter bag into the outer bag and close the zipper, making sure it is fully closed. To purchase replacement Micron Magic disposable filter bags, contact your local Kirby distributor. Or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct at 1-800-437-7170. The Mini M Tor is designed to collect large, heavy particles. To empty the Mini M Tor, unlatch the bag top by pressing the bag release button. Grasp the Mini M Tor underneath by its handhold and rotate it away from the body of the G4 as far as it will go, then lift it off. After removing the Mini M Tor and the entire bag assembly, position the front opening over a newspaper and shake it to remove the particles. Then, to replace the Mini mTOR, line up the raised indicator line on the Mini mTOR with the indicator line on the metal air exhaust port. Rotate the Mini mTOR toward the Kirby and lock it in place. Reattach the entire bag assembly by inserting the tab at the top of the bag into the slot under the bag release button. The belt lifter is an extremely important part of your G4 system. It serves two purposes. The first use is to engage or disengage the brush roll. When the brush roll is disengaged, the Kirby will perform as a straight suction cleaner without a rotating brush. The second use is to allow removal of the power nozzle when converting your Kirby for use with various attachments and optional accessories. To disengage the belt, make sure the G4 is unplugged. Then step on the bottom toe-touch control pedal to raise the nozzle. Raise the headlight hood. Turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until it stops and the red arrows line up. To re-engage the belt so the brush roll rotates, turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Then lower the headlight hood. The brush roll will now rotate when the power switch is turned on. Your G4 is also equipped with an innovative brush roll indicator light. It's located on the top of the power nozzle. When the brush roll is operating properly, this light will shine continuously. If the brush roll indicator light flickers or does not come on when using the power nozzle, the brush roll is not working properly. Either the belt is not engaged or it may need to be replaced. Replacing the belt will be covered in Section 5, Operating and Maintenance Tips. Your Kirby G4 is an extremely versatile home care system. In Part 2, we'll cover using your G4 as an upright cleaner using your upright as a straight suction cleaner, cleaning hard surface floors, and using your G4 as a portable cleaner. Before you begin cleaning with your new G4, it's important to have the power nozzle adjusted to the proper height setting. Before you turn the G4 on, raise the power nozzle by pushing the bottom pedal of the toe touch control all the way down. Turn the Kirby on, then Lower the power nozzle by stepping on the toe touch control upper pedal until you hear the brush contact the carpet. The change in sound signals the proper nozzle height. Any position lower than this will restrict proper airflow, reducing cleaning effectiveness and shortening belt life. If you want power assist, engage tech drive by pushing down the green D side of the tech drive power assist pedal. Straight suction cleaning allows you to vacuum delicate carpets without use of the brush roll. With the Kirby off, raise the headlight hood. Turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Then lower the headlight hood. 
the brush roll is now disengaged and your Kirby will operate as a straight suction cleaner. By attaching the optional hard floor pad to your Kirby, you can dust bare floors. This optional attachment is available with a floor care kit or separately. Before installing the hard floor pad, unplug the power cord from the wall outlet and make sure the motor and nozzle brush have stopped. Raise the power nozzle as far as it will go by pressing the bottom toe touch control pedal. Attach the hard floor pad onto the nozzle opening using the spring clips on the plate. Turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. This puts the G4 into the straight suction mode. Plug the G4 in. Make sure tech drive is in neutral and turn the power on. Then, lower the power nozzle by pressing the top toe touch control pedal one notch at a time until the bristles touch the floor. Again, tech drive should not be used on hard surface floors. To remove the hard surface pad, press the bottom toe touch control pedal to raise the nozzle as high as it will go. Then simply step on the shoulder of the hard floor pad as you tilt the G4 to the side. Besides being a remarkable upright cleaner, the G4 can easily be converted into a portable cleaner for things like mattresses or carpeted stairs. To convert your G4 to a portable cleaner, make sure the Kirby is unplugged and the tech drive is in neutral. Release the outer bag top by pressing the bag release button. Remove the power cord from the upright handle. Push the release button located at the base of the handle and pull the handle out of the slot. If you have any trouble releasing the handle, make sure you're not putting any forward or backward pressure on the handle itself while releasing it. Then, push the portable handle into the same slot until it snaps into place. Bend the filter bag in half and insert the bag latch tab into the slot on the portable handle until it snaps into place. You're now ready for portable power cleaning. On carpeted stairs, simply roll the cleaner back and forth so the brush roll vibrates the carpeting and loosens the dirt. Cleaning soft mattress surfaces is done the same as carpeted surfaces. However, you may want to disengage the brush roll which could pull loose any tufted buttons on the mattress surface. For straight suction cleaning, disengage the brush roll by raising the headlight hood and turning the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Just as with the upright mode, this will stop the brush roll from turning. To reduce risk of injury in the portable mode, place tech drive in neutral and make sure to keep long hair away from the rotating brush inside the nozzle. Your G4 comes with a wide variety of attachments for added versatility. In this section, we'll discuss removing the power nozzle to convert to a canister cleaner, using extension tubes, using the suction control grip, using a variety of attachment tools, using your G4 as a blower unit, and using the portable sprayer and portable shampooer. When using different cleaning attachments, the attachment hose is connected to the front of the cleaner in place of the power nozzle. The attachment hose may be used in either the upright or portable configuration. To install the attachment hose, first place tech drive in neutral. Raise the nozzle, turn the power off, and unplug the Kirby from the wall outlet. Raise the headlight hood and turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until it stops and the red arrows line up. Unlock the power nozzle by turning the accessory lock all the way to the left. At the connector end of the attachment hose, you will notice two hook-shaped lugs. Hook the lugs over the ends of the attaching bar, then push the opening of the hose up against the Kirby. Lock the attachment hose connector in place by turning the accessory lock to the right, then lower the headlight hood. 
With the attachment hose in place, the G4 will automatically adjust to high-speed hose operation. To attach any of the tools to the hose, push lightly while twisting the smaller end of the hose into the tool. One or two extension tubes can be attached to the end of the hose to extend your reach and efficiently use various attachments. The surface nozzle may be used on bare floors or for surface cleaning carpets and under low furniture. Rubber wheels on the nozzle allow it to glide silently on the surface of hard floors without scratching. When using attachments for certain applications, such as vacuuming drapes, you may want to control the amount of suction. The suction control grip features a valve to control the amount of suction. Simply slide the valve control back and forth until the desired level of suction is reached. The suction control grip can be used by itself with the attachment hose or with extension tubes. The suction control grip may be used between extension tubes. Or if you like, it can easily be moved to the end of the tubes, giving your brush attachments a different angle with which to clean. Attach the wall and ceiling brush to the end of an extension tube to clean walls, ceilings, drapes, and other surfaces. By rotating the brush, you can clean hard-to-reach places like high bookshelves. The duster brush may be connected to the attachment hose or the extension tubes to remove dust from any surface, including contoured or irregular surfaces. The upholstery nozzle is used for cleaning upholstered furniture, carpeted steps, and clothing. The crevice tool with the removable brush in the end removes dirt from sliding door rails and carpet edges. Remove the brush and the crevice tool can be used for cleaning cracks, crevices, corners, grooves and narrow openings without scratching. Used with the attachment hose, the massage cup provides an invigorating skin or scalp massage. Your G4 can also be used as a blower. With the power nozzle disconnected, fasten the air intake guard onto the attaching bar in the same manner as the attachment hose. Lock it on by turning the accessory lock all the way to the right, then lower the headlight hood. Press the bag release button and slide the bag top off. To remove the bag assembly, grasp the Mini mTOR handhold and rotate it out and away from the Kirby as far as it will go. Line up the indicator line on the hose end with the indicator line on the metal exhaust port and twist the hose connector clockwise to lock it in place. Remove the cord from the upright handle. Then remove the upright handle and replace it with the portable handle. By attaching the inflator-deflator tool to the attachment hose, you can inflate toys, air mattresses, or other similar low-pressure inflatable items. To deflate items, take the blower hose off the G4. Attach the Mini mTOR. Then fold the bag and clip it into the portable handle. Remove the air intake guard. Connect the attachment hose to the front of the Kirby. Connect the inflator-deflator tool to the attachment hose.
you may now use your Kirby to deflate items or clean tight areas such as computer keyboards or audio video equipment. The portable sprayer is used only in the blower mode. It is an excellent tool to apply many different types of water-based liquids to any type of surface. The spray can be adjusted, ranging from very fine to very coarse. Uses include applying water-based waxes to tile floors, deodorizing pet houses and bedding, applying self-mixed window cleaners, or spraying water-based paints or stains on walls, wood panels, and irregular shaped objects. One safety note, never use oil or solvent-based paint of any kind in the portable sprayer. The motor is open to the spray and could ignite flammable and volatile paint solvents. Also, note that the portable sprayer has not been tested or certified for use with any kind of paint by Canadian Standards Association. To set up the portable sprayer, unscrew the jar. Then fill three quarters full with any non-flammable liquid. If the portable sprayer will be tilted during use, use less solution to avoid large droplets in the spray. Screw the top on tightly. Make sure your Kirby is set up as a blower unit. The attachment hose should be connected to the exhaust port and the air intake guard should be on the front of the unit. Then connect the sprayer to the attachment hose. Holding the portable sprayer as level as possible, aim it toward a sheet of newspaper. Turn the Kirby on and squeeze the trigger spraying your water-based solution onto the newspaper to check spray pattern. With the nozzle pointed away from you, adjust the spray by turning the spray adjustment control on the trigger. Use slow, sweeping motions to spray the desired area with solution. Always squeeze the trigger fully to permit maximum flow and spray control. Immediately after use, wash the jar with warm water. The portable sprayer dip tube should also be removed and washed. To remove the nozzle jet on the front of the sprayer, simply press the two latches on the front and pull it out. Now the inside of the sprayer and the nozzle jet can be cleaned. Then return the nozzle jet to the front of the sprayer by aligning the latches with the holes on the front and snapping it in place. Reassemble the rest of the sprayer so none of the parts will be lost. Then rinse the sprayer jar and fill it with warm water. Spray the water until the spray becomes clear. Never clean the portable sprayer with flammable cleaning fluids. The motor is open to the spray and could ignite flammable and volatile paint solvents. The portable shampooer is also used in the blower mode only. The portable shampooer is designed for fast, easy cleaning of carpeted stairways and areas that are difficult to reach with the carpet shampoo system. However, the portable shampooer is not recommended for use on upholstery or delicate fabrics such as silk or velvet. If in doubt, try a test patch. Let the patch dry and check it before you shampoo further. To set up the portable shampooer, attach the shampooer cap to the end of the sprayer. The jar should be filled with warm water to the line marked water, then filled to the second line with Kirby carpet shampoo.
use only specially formulated Kirby carpet shampoo for best results. Screw the jar and portable sprayer together tightly. Then attach the sprayer to the attachment hose. The attachment hose should be connected to the air exhaust port and the air intake guard should be installed on the front of the unit. Turn the Kirby on and pull the trigger to spray suds onto the surface being cleaned. Or spray onto a sheet of newspaper and then apply to the surface being cleaned. Adjust the portable sprayer for proper suds volume by turning the spray adjustment control located on the trigger. Work suds into the surface with a soft brush or sponge until they disappear. Then allow the surface to dry completely. Finally, vacuum to remove the dry residue which contains grime and loosened dirt. To purchase additional Kirby shampoo, contact your local distributor or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct at 1-800-437-7170. Part 4 explains several optional Kirby accessories that will enhance the usefulness of your G4. These include the carpet shampoo system, the floor care kit, the turbo accessory kit, and the zip brush. The carpet shampoo system was designed to help you shampoo, fluff, and otherwise maintain carpeting. The carpet shampoo system contains the shampoo system nozzle, tray assembly, system hose, brush roll, tank, and a bottle of Kirby carpet shampoo. Before shampooing, vacuum the carpeted area thoroughly to remove any loose dirt. Then unplug the Kirby. Remove the nozzle. and then the bag assembly. Then, remove the nozzle and tray assembly from the carpet shampoo system box, firmly holding them together. Push up on the belt and turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter should catch and stretch the belt. With the G4 at its highest height setting, slide the nozzle tray assembly toward the Kirby and place the hooks on the bottom rear of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Turn the accessory lock to the right to lock the nozzle in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up and lower the headlight hood. The tank should be filled or emptied over a sink in case of spillage. Unscrew the large cap from the top of the tank and make sure the suds control valve is in the off position. With the tank level, fill to the third line for large rooms, the second line for medium-sized rooms, or the first line for small rooms. Fill with warm water, not hot. Using the cap of the carpet shampoo system tank, pour an appropriate number of tank capfuls, one, two, or three, of Kirby carpet shampoo into the tank. Note that using more than the appropriate number of capfuls will cause overfoaming. Replace the large cap into the opening on the top of the tank. One tankful of this solution should clean an area about 9 by 12 feet. Larger carpets will require emptying the tray and refilling the tank. To attach the tank, match up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port. Slide the tank down and rotate it toward the Kirby. 
Next, insert the dark gray hose elbow firmly into the tray hole. Then attach the light gray elbow to the tank. To control the amount of suds, turn the suds control valve clockwise for more suds and counterclockwise for less suds. Turning the valve to the off position will stop the flow of suds completely. Start with the suds control valve off because suds build up quickly in the tray if the Kirby is not kept moving when the motor is turned on. To begin shampooing, turn the Kirby on. Step on the upper toe touch control pedal to move the nozzle to its lowest position. Engage tech drive. Open the suds control valve halfway. Suds flow will begin immediately. As you move the Kirby forward, suds will be released and the brush will work them into the carpet. Pulling the G4 back in the same path should dispense suds in a half inch blanket the full width of the tray. If too much suds are being generated, compensate by adjusting the suds control valve or move the G4 faster. If less than a half inch blanket of suds is being generated, adjust the suds control valve or move the G4 more slowly. Once the surface being cleaned has been covered with a blanket of foam, wait about 10 minutes. Then turn the suds control valve off and go over the entire area again. After allowing the surface to dry completely, vacuum the dried suds residue. Note that the Kirby shampoo system, when used with Kirby carpet shampoo according to directions, has been tested safe on treated carpeting and will not affect stain resistant properties. Also, to purchase additional Kirby carpet shampoo, contact your local distributor, or if distance or convenience is a factor, Call Kirby Direct toll-free at 1-800-437-7170. To clean the carpet shampoo system, put Tech Drive in neutral, raise the nozzle, turn the Kirby off, and unplug it from the wall outlet. Pull the small flexible hose from the tank, but do not remove the hose from the tray. Raise the headlight hood. Release the belt by turning the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Turn the accessory lock to the left. Lift the nozzle tray assembly off the Kirby. Rotate the tank away from the Kirby as far as it will go, then lift it upwards. Carry both to the sink. Remove the hose from the tray and rinse it. Then turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Pull the tray and nozzle apart and rinse them. To clean the brush, rotate the plastic tray shield up and away from the brush. Push down on the brush roll ends to remove the brush. Rinse the shield. Then rinse the brush and remove any lint from the brush tufts. Shake excess water from the brush roll. Snap the brush back into place. The brass end goes into the larger opening. Then reattach the nozzle to the tray assembly. To avoid stretching the belt during storage, make sure the green arrows on the nozzle line up. To clean the tank, remove the sud screen cap sponge filter, and cup. Rinse thoroughly, including the tank. When clean, 
replace them to their original positions. Your G4 can also be used as a carpet fluffer by using the optional floor care polisher brush with the carpet shampoo system nozzle. Simply insert the brush roll into the shampoo system nozzle. Pressing the belt up against the brush roll, turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Then, install the nozzle brush assembly just as you would install the power nozzle. The system can now be used as a carpet fluffer to reset the nap on a matted down carpet. Plug in the power cord. Holding onto the handle firmly, lower the nozzle one notch at a time by pushing the toe touch control upper pedal. The instant you feel the Kirby starting to move, stop lowering the brush, engage the tech drive power assist and push the G4 back and forth over the carpet. Lowering the brush too far may cause certain carpet types to fuzz. For that reason, use of the carpet fluffer is not recommended for delicate carpets. When you've finished fluffing the carpet, remove the nozzle from the G4. Then, loosen the belt by turning the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up so you can remove the brush roll from the nozzle. The optional Kirby Floor Care Kit was designed primarily for homes with hard surface floors. With this kit, your G4 can be used as an effective cleaning and polishing system for wood, vinyl, or ceramic tile floors. The Floor Care Kit contains a floor care nozzle, a brush roll, a bottle of Kirby floor polish, and a hard floor pad. Hard surface floors should be cleaned prior to polishing. First, unplug the cord from the wall outlet and make sure the motor is not running. Then, raise the power nozzle as far as it will go by pressing the bottom toe touch control pedal. Attach the hard floor pad onto the nozzle opening using the spring clips on the plate. Note, the brush roll should be disengaged by aligning the red arrows on the belt lifter. This puts the G4 in the straight suction cleaner mode. This is the only mode in which the hard floor pad should be used. Again note that tech drive should not be used on hard surface floors. Then, lower the power nozzle to its lowest position by pressing the top toe touch control pedal until the brushes touch the floor. You are now ready to vacuum any hard surface floor. To remove the hard surface pad, press the bottom toe touch control pedal to raise the power nozzle as high as it will go. Then, simply step on the left shoulder of the hard floor pad as you tilt the G4 to the side. Once you've removed the loose dust and dirt, you should damp mop the area to remove any remaining grease or dirt film. When the floor dries, you're ready to start polishing. Apply just enough Kirby floor polish to provide a thin film. Use a sponge or sponge mop to distribute an even coat of polish. While the polish is drying to a haze, you can prepare the G4 for polishing. To assemble the floor polisher, first make sure the brush shield is in place. Turn the brush nozzle over and slide the tabs at the ends of the brush into the slots at each end of the nozzle, making sure the narrowest part of the tabs go in first. While holding the belt against the brush roll, turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Place the hooks located on the rear of the nozzle over the attaching bar. Turn the accessory lock to the right to lock the nozzle in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up, then lower the headlight cap. Once again, do not use tech drive with the floor polisher. Place tech drive in neutral by stepping on the gray end side of the tech drive power assist pedal. 
By this time, the floor polish has most likely dried to a haze and should be ready to polish. Make sure tech drive is in neutral and the nozzle is at its highest setting. Also, hold on to the handle before plugging the Kirby into a wall outlet because the system tends to move forward when the floor polisher brush touches the floor. Turn the G4 on. Press the toe touch control upper pedal to lower the brush one notch at a time. Lower the brush as far as possible. With the polisher running, move the Kirby over the floor with slow, steady strokes, as though you were cleaning a carpet. Continue to polish until the haze is removed, leaving a luxurious satin finish. A few tips on using Kirby floor polish. Don't shake the bottle. That creates air bubbles that interfere with an even application of the polish. When applying multiple coats, be sure to polish completely between coats. By doing so, you will avoid locking in the haze that forms when the polish dries. Avoid using Kirby floor polish on unfinished or untreated wood. It's a water-based product and may be absorbed. Kirby floor polish is designed to wear evenly and avoid the kind of cracking and peeling normally associated with acrylic polymer-based products. When the shine begins to wear off, simply repeat the polishing process to return a satin sheen. Should you ever need to strip Kirby floor polish, a simple mixture of household ammonia and water will do the job. And to purchase more Kirby floor polish, contact your local Kirby distributor or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct toll-free at 1-800-437-7170. The Turbo Accessory Kit can be used for a wide variety of household jobs. It's a sander, a buffing unit, a scouring unit, and a massage unit. Note, when using the Turbo Accessory Kit as a sander, it's always advisable to use safety glasses. The Kirby should be in the canister mode. To begin, unsnap the sander dust shroud at the rear of the tool and pull it off. Flip up the levers on the side of the turbo accessory to open the clamps. Select the correct grade of sandpaper needed for the job. Fine paper for a smooth finish or coarse paper to clean rough surfaces or remove paint. Slide the sheet into the front clamp and lock the clamp lever. Tightly wrap the paper around the bottom of the turbo accessory and tuck the end into the rear clamp. Then lock the rear clamp. With the turbo accessory on a level surface, wrap the dust shroud around the sander with the opening to the rear and snap it shut. Be sure no metal objects such as tacks or nails are sticking up from the surface to be sanded. They could damage the turbo accessory or cause sparks, which could ignite dust. Insert the attachment hose into the end of the turbo accessory and turn the Kirby on. Grip the sander at the front and rear, then press the on button on top of the sander. While applying light pressure, move the sander over the surface slowly, allowing it to do the work. Don't force it or lean heavily on it. That will only slow it down and the tool works best at high speeds. Replace the disposable Micron Magic filter bag after extended sanding because the dust is fine and tends to plug the pores of the bag. To use the turbo accessory as a polisher, attach the synthetic lamb's wool pad using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper. Use it for polishing hard wax surfaces, such as tabletops, paneling, and large flat surfaces. The dust shroud is not used when polishing. Attach the webbed nylon scouring pad using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper.
the turbo accessory now becomes a scouring tool. Use it for scouring hard surfaces. The dust shroud is not used with the scouring pad. For safety reasons, do not turbo scour painted surfaces. The turbo accessory massage unit is intended for use where massage is desired or medically recommended. To use the orbital massage unit, attach the soft vinyl pad to the turbo accessory using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper, but the dust shroud is not necessary. Then, start the G4 and hit the on switch for a relaxing massage. Do not use the orbital massager on swollen or inflamed areas, legs with varicose veins, areas where there are skin eruptions, unexplained calf pains or anesthetic skin areas, unless first approved by your doctor. In addition, children must be supervised when using the massager. When connected to the attachment hose, the zip brush can be used for a wide variety of cleaning jobs, including carpeted steps or upholstery. For optimum results, avoid pressing down heavily on the zip brush. Allow the brush to rotate at maximum speed by gently moving it side to side on the surface being cleaned. For safety's sake, do not insert fingers into the revolving brush area or push the release button while the brush is in motion. Keep the brush flat against the surface being cleaned. The brush can throw particles outward. Also, Avoid using the zip brush on delicate fabrics. To clean the zip brush, press the button on the front of the brush to release the outer brush ring. Remove any particles in the tool cavity. And remove any particles or lint from the brush and turban. Place the center brush air turbine back into the tool and turn it until the tabs drop into the slots. Hook the tab on the rear of the ring brush into the small opening of the tool and snap it back into place. Your G4 is a highly sophisticated home care system. As with most modern appliances, it requires a modest degree of routine maintenance to keep it operating efficiently. This section presents a few tips on things such as changing the power nozzle belt and adjusting the brush roll for optimum performance. After extended use, the power nozzle belt on your G4 may become stretched or worn, causing the belt to slip. If this condition exists, simply replace the belt with a new Kirby approved belt. To change the belt, remove the nozzle from the Kirby. Then release the belt tension by turning the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Unlock the rug plate by unhooking the two latches on the rear of the nozzle. Pull on the rear edge of the rug plate to remove it from the nozzle. Before removing the brush roll, note the color on the ends. Lift out the belt and brush roll. Slide off the old belt and replace it with a new one. When replacing the brush roll, make sure the adjustment setting, one notch coated with red, two notches coated with green, or three notches coated with black, is the same as when the brush was removed. Place the belt and brush roll back into the nozzle. It will only fit the correct way. Then, center the belt on the brush. Carefully align the tabs on the front edge of the rug plate when replacing it. Latch the two locks that hold it in place. Turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up, making certain the belt is stretched to the top of the nozzle. Now you're ready to reattach the power nozzle and re-engage the belt. To purchase replacement belts, contact your local Kirby distributor. Or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct, toll free, at 1-800-437-7170.
The brush roll bristles wear away after long periods of use. This reduces cleaning efficiency. Adjustments at the ends of the brush roll are designed to adjust the brush so it works like new again. The brush roll on a new Kirby has the ends in the red position. Two more positions marked green and black may be used when the bristles become worn. To check for worn bristles, remove the power brush nozzle from the Kirby. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Turn the power nozzle over and place a ruler against the metal rug plate. If the bristles are below or just touching the ruler, the brush roll should be adjusted to the next highest setting. Unlock the two latches on the rear of the power nozzle to remove the rug plate. Remove the brush and rotate the brush ends to green or black as appropriate. Place the brush back into the nozzle. Replace the rug plate and lock into place with two latches on the rear of the power nozzle. Once this is completed, or if the brush does not need adjustment, turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. This will stretch the belt in preparation for returning the nozzle to the Kirby. That covers the basics of your new Kirby G4. If you have any further questions, please consult your owner's manual or contact your local Kirby distributor. I certainly hope this owner's manual video will help you get the most out of your new Kirby. The G4 represents the most advanced system we've ever offered, and it's sure to be the most well-received Kirby ever. Right now, we're looking for enterprising individuals to help spread the word about this fantastic product. If you know someone who'd like to earn extra income by showing the G4 to friends and neighbors, have them contact your local Kirby distributor. It's an opportunity to share the G4 story and earn a few hundred dollars a month in the process. And in today's economy, who couldn't use some extra cash? Your local Kirby distributor can fill you in on all the details. Meanwhile, all of us here at Kirby World Headquarters wish you and your family the very best and hope your new G4 serves you well for years to come.